I was once told that walking through a doorway could cause someone to forget even the most precious memories they had. Memories of good, memories of bad, memories of love and of loss, all tucked away neatly, stored like the worn out blankets that were kept to dress the rainy days and bad habits that happened from time to time. Or what it felt like to rest your head on a friend's shoulder that still carries with it the creases from where you last placed your heart. Just like that. Gone within a single step. That somehow three beams and an imaginary line drawn across some old aching floorboards were all that stood between you and the infinite silence of the very things that once colored your mind with sound. It's funny. You can make yourself believe almost anything if you, uh, if you think about it for long enough. I was once told that the love I felt beating inside my chest was nothing more than my mind playing an unfair trick on my heart. And like a pair of dice dancing along the uneven pavement, their fate, much like yours or mine, had already been decided. That even the cracks that drew their faults between two opposing sides could not escape a fate that was always destined to be sealed. To think that someone could actually believe that the swelling tides of my heart were no more than an anxious highway of ins and outs anchoring my imagination to the castles I've been building in the sky. Well, maybe they are the crazy ones. Then again, I have been known to misplace my hope in the way things fall. And if I had to confess, there stands a greater chance that I've all but lost my mind in here. So I suppose it's better off this way because I've always believed that the odds of finding what you seek tend to favor those who are open to seeking them in the first place. And I, for one, have never quite understood how odds stand to get even without that frame in mind. To be clear, I've seen a million faces. I've seen a million different faces, each one mirroring that of your own. And still, none of them have felt like home to me. None of them have felt like you. So here we are. And I can vaguely and strangely trace your outline. I can remember what it felt like to hold you. I can remember what it was like to stare blindly into your eyes for what felt like an eternity. How could I forget that? I could never forget that. I could never forget you. No matter how long it takes for my words to make their way through the vastness of this place we've called home, I unto you and you unto me, I say them and will continue to do so, day after day, night after night, never knowing if you'll actually hear them. There's no place for time here, just overlapping moments where I thought I'd found you, where I thought I heard the sound of your breath, where I felt your heart as it waited patiently for mine, retracing the steps that we left in the life before last before our eyes closed, before the great divide, before a doorway stood between you and me. As it stands, I found myself in that doorway again, with both feet and in your heart on my sleeve, but I can't bring myself to walk through this time. Not yet, at least. Not until I take one last look and see that it was you, that it was always you. Our hearts strewn across those old fragile floorboards. The silhouettes of each and every one of our memories playing out like a story that we both know we've seen before. I remember now. This was where I first found you. And beyond those closed doors, I will find you again. My love. I will find you again.